greatest of these is charity. And we already have told you that charity means love. Charity is love. So that's what we are supposed to be. We're supposed to be charitable and giving love one towards the other. Charity endures all things. And the word endure means to last, survive, and persist. This is what endures mean. That means our love is supposed to last, survive, and persist. See, we don't drown, amen. We don't sink under the pressures of loving one another, amen. amen. It means to undergo trials, troubles, problems, difficulties, and bad news. But yet, keep the faith and keep on loving God. Even when we have bad news, we're going to do what? Keep on loving God. Don't turn to God and say, I thought you loved me. Because if you love me, all these things will not be happening. We live in a world that a whole lot of things won't be happening. Amen? Amen. It don't have nothing to do with God loving us at all. Amen. And number eight, love never fails. If anybody wants any more of God, I'm going to write down and didn't get enough definition, just let me know. Because they do with me uh, to last, survive, and persist. Now, charity, or which is love, never fails. There's something how, out of everything in this life. Your cars fail, your health fail, your eyesight fail, marriage fail, your jobs fail, people fail on you. But love never fails. That's making a bold statement and a powerful statement about love. Amen. This is love never fails. So if we love one another like this, then we should never fail one another by loving one another. Amen. Our love should never fail. It should always be a love that's alive. Amen. So love that never fails speak of an unending, unchangeable, and steadfast love we should have for one another. A love that never fails, it's one repeated, speaks of an unending, unchangeable, and steadfast, unmovable love we should have for one another. In other words, that's tough love. Amen? Amen. So fail has two meanings. A love that never fails. So fail has two meanings. The first meaning means it's a miscarriage. Love will never miscarriage, which means love never dies. The body of Christ cannot allow love to die. Love must go to its full term in order to be birthed out of us alive. Amen. We can't have a love that dies. We can't have a love that halfway. We got to birth this love. We can't have a stillborn love. Amen. We cannot miscarry this love. We got to continue to love to the end. We must be determined when we die, we will die loving you. When we die, that can be on our, 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 our tomb. When she died, she died loving me. Amen. Amen. And the second means flunk. Flunk. So love has double meaning. The first is miscarriage. That means love never dies. And the other words means flunk. When we love one another as Jesus loves us, we will not get a failing grade. So we won't get a failing grade, amen, saints? We will graduate from the Divinity School of Love with a grade point average of 7.0 on our heavenly report card, amen? amen? We will graduate from the Divinity School of Love with a grade point average of 7.0 on our heavenly report card. Wouldn't that be wonderful to receive a poor card like that? A 
a 7.0, you hide, you, we, we will graduate. We will pass the test. We will get a reward for loving one another. Isn't that wonderful? It says in verse 9, we prophesy what we have been given to us by the Holy Spirit. That's what we prophesy now. But outside of that, we know nothing. Amen. I always say, I say we don't know nothing. <laughs> Amen. So what are you saying, God? I don't know nothing. <laughs> Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. But one day, we will have complete knowledge of all prophecy. We're going to have supernatural knowledge. Good God from Zion. They talk about Einstein. Einstein won't have nothing compared to the knowledge that we're going to acquire when we go on the other side. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When, in verse 10, when man's knowledge is made perfect, the limit knowledge have now will, that we have now will be overturned. It will be passed away. So we don't worry about trying to acquire earthly knowledge. Amen. We all, and people trying to dig in this and dig in that. Let me get more. I don't know about all of this and what this is saying. That is saying. Just have faith and believe what you read. Amen. Amen. People trying to rewrite the Bible, trying to take away this and add that. This Bible is enough for us to, 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 to learn and stand by and obey. Amen. I just want to believe what is written in the scripture and live with the knowledge that we have. Amen. Amen. Because there's a lot of knowledge here. And if it wasn't for Jesus, how do we can do all things with Jesus Christ who strengthened us? We can even do this, amen? So I don't need to know any more than what this Bible is telling me, amen? Yeah. So when I was a child, I spake as a child. I spoke words without putting careful thoughts into it. So when you as a child, child, don't, child just open their mouth and say anything. They don't know to put thoughts in things before they say it. They just say it. They said that I've heard from a lot of people, they said, one thing about a child, they're, in, they're, they're honest. And they sure would, they will say what's on their mind. I think uh, uh, one of the uh, hosts on the, the show, uh, in the, in, back in the day, and they had children on the show, they would love to ask them questions, because they will say what they thinking, amen? But see, when you're a child, you will say what you're thinking. And sometimes what you're thinking and what we're thinking is what the flesh will come out. So then you put words out there, and I'm telling you, certain words you put out there, people will never forget. They'll forgive you, but they won't forget those words. So we, when he was a child, he thought. He didn't put careful thoughts in how he talked to people. If our tongue was not controlled by the love of God. See, our tongue has to be controlled by the love of God. Because if we do not allow our tongue to be controlled by the love of God, we will spit bullets at people. Our words will spit bullets. We will kill people, hurt them, hit them down to the ground in the body of Christ. So many people have been floored. So many people have been knocked to the ground because when they open their mouth, instead of opening their mouth and allowing the love of God to speak through them, they spit bullets. Killing one another in the church. Murdering. Lord help us. As I understood as a child. As I had limited understanding. Children have limited understanding. They don't have the understanding of like my granddaughter. She's uh, would be nine years old. She doesn't have the understanding as a 13 and a 14 and a 15 year old. So uh, when you're a child your understanding is limited. So when we were a child, he said, when we come in as babes in Christ, that's why we had to drink milk. Milk from the Bible, but, but Paul said, you don't continue as a grown person in the 40s to keep on sucking on bottles. That, that don't look right. It's time for us to use these teeth and time chewing up the meat of God's word, amen? He said, I had limited understanding. My mind was not fully developed in the word of God. But see, the Lord wants us to grow. He wants us to grow in love. He, he's focusing all of this and that he wants us to grow in love. He said, I was not able to understand what God expected of me. But as we grow in the Lord, God wants us to understand what he is expecting from us. And what he's expecting from us is that we love one another. He says, we were, he says when we were tempted to think evil of the brethren, 
Is it my love? Hallelujah. My love? Hallelujah. My love? Hallelujah. Will not think evil of the brother. It won't think evil of the brother. So when we begin to think evil, when we begin to talk evil, when we begin to speak one another in an unloving way, then we have to say, love think is no evil. I went through a test one time, and then this person had treated me so mean, and, and you know it's so easy for all those thoughts to just crown in your mind. And my brother says, he's don't let me say what I'm thinking. <laughs> And I said, Lord, don't let me think so I won't say it. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we have to shut down the thought so we won't say it. Not only, that, not only don't say what we're thinking, but we don't even want to think what we're thinking. Amen. <laughs> because we don't want to think, think evil of one another. We want to give one another the benefit of what? The doubt. And then verse number six is a chair to rejoice is not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. For example, love rejoices when the brother come out of sin. When the brother and Satan had caused our sisters and brothers to backslide, we don't rejoice because they but they treated us mean we said that's what they get. Yeah, God got them. They out there reading what they sow. So we, <laughs> so we want to so we want to say. Lord, I know they were mean to me. They talked about me behind my back. No matter what I try to do, I try to reach out with love. And then they knew it on the back slid. Boy, you will be tempted to say those things. That's what they get. God gonna get them. <laughs> you know? But what we have to do is pray and say, Lord, bring them back to you. Many times I pray for the backsliders. And I said, Lord, Jesus said he would leave the 99 and go after the one. The one. I said, Lord, go after that one. Go after that one, Lord, and bring them back into the body of Christ. Amen. Because yeah. well, that's what God wants us to do. And the word all, Jesus. The word all is mentioned four times in the upcoming scriptures. And all means nothing is released from obligation. Paul is telling us in these next scriptures, nothing is released from obligation. We are obligated to love one another. No matter how evil people treat us, we are not released from our obligation to love them. See, love has no option. There's no option. Amen. And charity bears all things. To bear means to cover with silence. Endure patiently and uphold lovingly. Bear means to cover with silence. So when that person hurts you, we don't get on that phone and tell them that you know what she did to me. She did this and she did that. And then the guy, then the next person is going to say, well, now I'm not going to, I'm just going to tell you this because I know you're not going to have the person hang up the phone and go tell somebody else. <laughs> it's that we are to cover their transgressions. We are to cover what they did to me. Cover, and we're going to be hurt, but I think the best thing for us to do is tell Jesus. Because Jesus is not going to get on that phone and go from one person to another. Amen. Amen. So we got to cover. It says cover was silent. When you want to get on that phone and talk, cover with silence. I said, put your mouth on what? A shut mouth ministry. <laughs> cover them with your silence as you will. People can hurt you so much you want to release it. You want to tell it. But certain things that we need to do what? Cover with silence. Endure patiently and uphold them lovingly. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. We can do all what? Thanks to Christ who strengthened us. Love is not willing to uncover our brothers and sisters' weaknesses, flaws, mistakes. Instead, we what? We pray for them. This flesh is ready, willing, and able to run with gossip, slander, tail-bearing, and add more words to an already bad situation. Then we get off the phone, and we feel good. <laughs> Sometimes you feel good. 
I'd have released that and told that person how you can hurt me. Then after, before, within maybe 30 minutes before you go to bed, all of a sudden the Holy Ghost makes you feel so bad. He said, Lord, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that to that person. Then you had to call the person up and apologize to them for even telling them. <laughs> so that's why if we learn to cover with silence, this is a learning process. Amen, saints. I'm telling you, this is not no overnight. People say, you've been saved a long time. Let me tell you something. This flesh is alive. Amen. It's alive and kicking. You don't want to die. <laughs> and so some Proverbs 6 and a uh, Proverbs 6 and 19. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord or contention or arguments among the brother is an abomination to the Lord. And that abomination means to dislike intensely. And I hate his name. God hated when we sow discord among the brethren. I said, Lord, this must be one of the rewards that God is going to give us. And how we love one another. Because you know how when you graduate, they give you these rewards. And those that's on the honor student get an extra reward. They even get an extra, um, sometimes a little ribbon or something. Because they did something that was beyond the other students. So I wonder if that's what we're going to get for loving one another. Get that extra, extra reward. Don't you want to get the saints? Amen. I know that's right. Let me hear y'all. Amen. Amen. Charity, hope is all things. And this means that having great expectations. That we have great expectations. So even when you're, when you're Special babes, and you feel like people cannot come up to the level of love that they should be. You think they've been saved long enough, and they should know. You know, we don't really know one another like that, like God. So I, we should have great expectation that they're going to change, and they're going to come up to loving you more and treating you right. Amen. And we can have that great expectation until it comes to pass. Amen. <laughs> And if it don't come to pass, we still won't have great expectation. Amen. <laughs> the hope over hope overcomes unbelief. So we're gonna believe that you're gonna change, amen. amen. So and if you don't change, I know I'm gonna love you anyhow, amen. amen. Because I'm because God has great uh, <laughs> God has great expectations of me loving you, even though you don't love me the way you should, and I have great expectations of you loving me. And if you fail that, I don't want to fail God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to have great, because God has great expectation of me. More of what is given, more is what is required. Hope is trusting, and also this love means that hope is trusting, trusting God's love, no matter how bad things get. We know that God will what? Fix it. See, God is a fixer. God is a fixer. He fixed things in our lives. And if things don't change in our lives, guess what he does? He just fixed the way you think about it. Amen? Amen. That's why grace, when I love this definition about grace, and I never heard it before. It was years and years and years when I heard the second definition of grace. Because we know that grace is undeserved favor. But when he said grace is when God changed your way of thinking. I said, Lord, that was a rainbow word for me. I've been praying on that ever since I heard it. And God will change your way of thinking. He will change your way of thinking. And when people will see so much grace on you that you didn't even realize that you had it. So I see grace on you. God will change your way of thinking in a horrible situation. And then when he changed your way of thinking, you have so much peace. Amen. That's when, when he told Paul. But God would tell Paul that he was giving him an, <laughs> an undeserved faith <laughs> when Paul was going through all that. He was giving Paul that grace that changed his way of thinking. When Paul got behind those prisons, he was up there singing and rejoicing. Amen. Because God changed his way of thinking. Amen. We can be behind prison walls. Hallelujah prison in your thoughts and whatever you have to go through in this life. But God can change your way of thinking and you can start shouting and saying hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Lord, I'm in this prison. Hallelujah. But I'm going to praise you. Hallelujah. Because you changed my way of thinking. Not that I don't like this place, but you change your way of how I respond and react to this place. Amen. Amen. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Unseemly means cursing. You know saints curse? They will cuss you out. Also means un unseemly, also means sexual and inappropriate conversation. Unruly behavior. Vulgar and offensive words. Unseemly means cussing, sexual and inappropriate conversation, unruly behavior, vulgar and offensive words. See, love don't God, the love of God don't have us acting like that. Not the body of Christ. Amen. If you act in the opposite, then what do you call yourself? Kind of minded Christians. In James 3, 9 and 10, it says, Therewith we bless God. He talked to the church. Even the Father therewith curse. They bless God and then they curse God. And curse, that word curse means wound with arrows and darts. It's like you're taking a bow and arrow and shooting your brother. Just shooting a bow and arrow and shooting them and throwing darts like you're throwing dots at a dartboard. That's what that means. Cursing me. And that's why people are so wounded. It's that we men which are made after the similitude and likeness of God. It's we made in the likeness of God. But yet you treat us like we ain't nothing but a dartboard. Or you point an arrow to a tree. That's sad. One of the main Jesus, out of the mouth, he said, of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. He said, my brother, these things. Now he talking about brethren. He said, all this in the church. He said, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. These not, this should be. He said, we don't curse our brethren. We bless our brethren. Amen. Amen. And cursing is not even talking about using a bad word. Some of those words that hurt you, make you feel so bad. So many words that people have said to one another, and actions are words too. You may not speak it, but your actions are words and daggers against my heart. And sending people out to church. He said, that should not be. In Psalms 141 and 3, it says, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door. And that door means entrance and exit of my lips. Lord, help me to be careful what I put in my mouth. But not only protect the entrance of what's coming in my mouth, but also what's coming out. Help me, Lord, to watch. That's why it's so wonderful to be slow to speak. Let your words be few. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. It's an honor to let your words be few. Amen. Even when you text it, I let my words be few. I don't have time to make no whole long paragraph. <laughs> and I, see, mine is, is that I look at those young people, they go, Chew. and I'm just going like, I see, <laughs> I'll make my words be few and be done with it. <laughs> I said, they can really move their little fingers and just go so fast. So when I get a speaker phone, mine will probably be a little bit longer. But still, when you let your words be few, what, what, what he's saying, what the Bible's saying is be careful what you're saying. Because much words don't do nothing but bury you. You even forget what you say, amen, when you say a lot of words. It said, charity seek is not her own. Charity seek is not her own. See, love is the best weapon against selfishness. Love is the best weapon against selfishness. See, love does not seek to hurt or take advantage of the brother. Love always looks for ways to be a blessing to one another. It's not selfish. It's not about me, myself, and I. It's also about us and we. Amen.
in Romans 12, 19. It says, be kind, be kindly. That kindly means friendly, affectionate, one to another with brotherly love. And honoring, preferring one another. And that word prefer, preferring means value one another, respect one another. See, we got to respect one another. Love calls you to respect one another. You're just not going to just say anything to me. And those of us that's older, we're not seeing old young people, you respect your elders, those that's older, those that's in the church for a long time. You don't have to be old to be in the church a long time. You respect your elders. Respect, respect those that's in authority. Watch what you say to them. Watch how you react to them. Hold your tongue. You don't just say anything to us, amen? amen. You, don't, you don't say it. Love calls you to respect us, those that in the ministerial, those that's in leadership role, those that's older than you. You don't just open up your mouth and say what you think you're supposed to say to us. And we have a right to check you too, amen? Amen? amen. amen. Let me hear it again, amen? Because it's wrong. Love, respect, and God is watching that. Your mouth will condemn you. Jesus, help us. Jesus, help us. If we have brotherly love for one another, that means born again Christians cannot commit spiritual incest in the church. He's not talking about, he said, brotherly love. I'm your brother and I'm your sister. The pastors have no right to have incest with their members. I'm not above anybody. We're not supposed, we're not above anybody. You're my brother and you're my sister. And if I love you with that brotherly love, then I will not fornicate or commit adultery with you. Amen, saints? Amen. I have no right to look at a young man and commit adultery with him. That means I have committed spiritual incest and that's an abomination to God that I would want my brother and my sister. Amen? Amen. And God do not want these pastors to do that, whether they're male or female. Amen? Amen? Spiritual incest is going on in the church between brothers and sisters, members in the body of Christ. Spiritual incest is going on between pastors and their members. They're in the church. Said, any, mighty, any, meeny, mighty, mo, which one of you going to be my holy? Uh oh. Whoremongers. Jesus. Whoremongers. The body of Christ has, we have a blood covenant with one another. With our brothers and sisters. So that means we have a what? A new DNA. The body of Christ is having fornicating adultery with other members of the body of Christ. Lord, help us. Many are called, but what? Few are chosen. We got to live this life. Charity is not easily provoked. Provoked. That means it's not easy to rebel, make better, or want revenge. You did this to me and I'll never forget it. Going to bed trying to figure out how I'm gonna get you. You can't sleep, because I gotta get my revenge on what you did to me. When, you, when God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. I'd rather for God to repay, because I can't do nothing compared to what God can do to you. To, do to you. Amen? Amen? Charity thing is no evil. That charity think is no evil because when you think evil has a domino effect, it has a domino effect when we think evil. First, evil begins with evil thoughts. That's number one. Then it enters into our spirit, number two. It comes out of our mouth, number three. And then it's manifested by our actions. So there's a domino effect. You stack those dominoes up. First it started one, 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 one. No effect. It just don't stay one place. It begins with evil thoughts. It entered into our spirit. 
It comes out of our mouth and it is manifested by our, by our actions. So that's why it's very important for us not to what? Think evil. 